share a little bit of an election-themed project with you. These storage bins are a great way of hiding your clutter behind a decorative facade, but they can be kind of pricey and it might be hard to find ones that exactly fit your shelves. So it's a great thing to make yourself. There are a lot of online tutorials about how to do this. Most of those involve gluing fabric on top of a cardboard box. There's nothing wrong with that if you want a little cheap and dirty decor, but I don't have a lot of confidence in the long-term prospects of that box, especially if you're using it a lot. So enter the plastic yard sign. These can be readily available for free, especially right after elections. And they're made of corrugated plastic that's sturdy and lightweight, and it'll last as long as you need it to for an application like this. I asked around to my neighbors and quickly and easily came up with enough signs that otherwise would have been thrown out to make all of these. A bin of about this size requires about a yard of fabric and about three plastic signs, plus enough Velcro to go around the perimeter. The plastic panels get cut to size and then they're inserted into the slots and held in place by the Velcro, with the exception of the bottom panel, which goes into its own little pocket and then is held in by the rest of the structure. I think you could pretty much use just about any kind of fabric as long as it's not too stretchy. If you don't want to sew all that Velcro, an alternative is to make your inside and outside circumference pieces several inches higher than the finished height of your bin. And then once you've put in your plastic panels, fold everything over to the outside and that'll keep everything in place. And this also has the added benefit, in addition to being a lot faster to sew, that if I decide that I want to make this a taller bin in the future, I have enough extra height that I could just replace these plastic panels with higher ones and I'll still have enough to have a nice folded edge, but I can make it into a taller bin without having to make it all new from the start. But since the Velcro version is a little bit more complicated, that's the one that I'm discussing for the rest of the video. You don't need a pattern for this. All you need is a few calculations and a way to measure and cut accurate rectangles. For this example, I'm making a bin that's 10 inches wide by 12 inches deep by 11 inches high. That means the bottom of the box will be 10 by 12. The circumference is the total of the four sides, which is 44 inches. I'm using a seam allowance of half an inch, so if the bottom of the bin will be 10 by 12, I need to cut it to 11 by 13. The cut dimensions of the circumference will be 45 inches wide by 12 inches high. The flap is the same length as the circumference piece, and is 3 inches high to give me enough room for some space around the Velcro plus a hem and seam allowance. Here I'm cutting the fabric I'm using for the inside. I've made a decorative front panel, but that's optional, and in any case, there are plenty of quilting videos to tell you how to do that if you need them. There are five fabric components to this bin. The circumference on the outside, the circumference on the inside, the bottom of the bin on the outside, the bottom of the bin on the inside, and the flap that'll hold the plastic panels in place. Both bottom pieces are cut to the same dimensions, and so are both circumference pieces. The first step is to hem the interior pieces. It's not much to watch and I didn't video it, sorry. On the bottom, I, hedge, I hem one edge at half an inch. It doesn't even really matter which one, but I chose one of the shorter edges. On the circumference piece, I hem the top edge by folding half an inch over toward the wrong side of the fabric. On the flap, the hem will make a nice finished edge that covers the Velcro. A single fold hem is probably fine in all of these places, the raw edge of the fabric won't be exposed when the bin is in use, so it's not going to fray or get messy. All of these hems are half an inch because that's my seam allowance, and these hemmed edges need to not get sewn into other seams by accident. Next, I'm going to mark out the seams that will eventually be the corners of the box. The circumference has to have a seam somewhere, and I'm going to put it all the way in the center back. It could kind of go anywhere, but I figure it might as well stay out of the way of sewing the segments. First, I need to find the center of the interior circumference piece, which I do by folding it in half. For a box that's 10 inches wide, I measure 5 inches to either side of my center mark and draw a line across the fabric. I'm using wide quilting rulers here, but if you don't have those, you really just need something that'll give you a straight line that's square to the bottom edge. If all else fails, you can use your yard sign before you cut it up. Just make sure you clean it up a little first. Then I measure out the sides at 12 inches each. The remaining portion on each end should be five and a half inches, so that when I sew it together with a half inch seam allowance, I'll end up with a back side that's ten inches, just like the front. Since I'm using white canvas for the inside of these bins, I just made these markings in pencil. It'll eventually be sewn over, 
and it's on the inside in any case, so it's not going to show. If your fabric is a darker color, Taylor's chalk is probably a better bet. I'm also transferring all these markings over to the flap. The flap is going to hold the plastic pieces into their slots with Velcro, so I need to sew that on next. Ideally, you want a strip of Velcro on each side that covers the whole length, while keeping maybe a quarter of an inch shy of the corners so that it doesn't bench up. That means cutting each piece of Velcro about half an inch shorter than the side it'll be sewn onto. I've also kept it out of the way of where I'll eventually sew up the circumference piece in the back, so the Velcro for the back side of the bin is sewn in two halves. First, I sew the loop side of each piece, in other words, the soft side of the Velcro, onto the circumference piece just below the hem. To verify the position of the Velcro on the flap, I hold the piece in position with half an inch sticking out above the hem. Then I sew the hook side, meaning the rough side, of the Velcro onto the flap so that it'll match up and leave a half inch of seam allowance sticking out above that hem. Long strips of Velcro are ideal because it's quick to sew and it gives a smooth and consistent result. I happen to have two inch wide Velcro on hand and I cut that down to one inch. Narrower would be fine too, as long as you're accurate enough in sewing it down so that the two sides will match up. But depending on where you get your Velcro, it sometimes doesn't come in big packages and it can be expensive. So alternatively, you could use a bunch of little squares spaced out and get the job done. This definitely takes longer and it isn't as smooth and consistent in the end result, but it does use less Velcro. Now it's time to actually start sewing this thing together. First, I'm going to sew the corner seams that act as dividers between the sides of the box. I stack the inside fabric and the outside fabric with their wrong sides together and the face of the outside fabric facing the table so that I can see the pencil lines I marked out earlier. With the bottom edges of the two pieces aligned, the outside fabric should stick out half an inch higher because the inside has been hemmed by that half an inch. To keep the layers from shifting around while I do the next part, I'm just sticking in a couple pins on each side of the lines. Now I'm going to sew down each line, starting with a little bit of a back tack up at the top edge so that the seam doesn't start pulling apart. Because of my decorative front panel, I'm sewing the seams adjacent to that from the outside so that I can make sure everything keeps aligned, but otherwise I would just sew all of this from the inside. Once those four lines are sewn, the next step is to attach the flap with the Velcro. It gets sewn to the top edge of the outside fabric with the non-Velcro side down against the outside of the circumference piece so that there's a clean edge when the flap is folded toward the inside and Velcroed shut. Make sure the lines line up with where the seams are in the circumference piece and that things don't get shifted around. This will ensure that the Velcro matches up and doesn't bunch up in the corners. Now I need to make this into a tube. So first I fold the circumference so that the right sides of the inside are together, and sew that edge. Then I have to fold back the outside fabric so that I can get its right sides together. I sew right through the flap as well, with the seam allowance between the flap and the circumference pointing up towards the flap. This way it'll fold over with the flap when I put the plastic in. This part looks a little weird when it's sewn, but when I turn it right side out between these layers, everything looks like it should. The last step before assembling it to the bottom is going to be to sew around the bottom edge just to keep the layers from drifting during that next step. Now I'm going to sew the bottom on. I line up one edge of the bottom with its corresponding segment in the circumference, outsides together. If everything is measured correctly, the bottom piece should stick half an inch past the corner seam on each end. I think it's easiest to start sewing in the middle of a long side rather than at a corner. When I reach the corner, the circumference piece will want to stay in a straight line while the bottom piece needs to turn around the corner. That's going to make it a little awkward to sew, so to get around that I'm going to clip the seam allowance on the circumference. I'm checking to make sure the needle is down exactly at the corner of the bottom and exactly at the corner seam on the circumference piece. Just a little snip most of the way through the seam allowance toward the needle will do the trick to let you sew the corner more smoothly. You can even clip all these ahead of time since you know the corners will be at the corner seams. Proceed all the way around until you get back to where you started. Keep sewing a little bit past where you started to just keep the seam from pulling apart. Sorry, the fabric sometimes blocks the view of what's going on under the needle. I'll try a different camera angle next time. There's just one more sewing step. But first, I'm clipping off the corners of the bottom piece to avoid bulk and make it easier to bind the raw edges. This last step is to just cover over the raw edges of the last seam. I'm using 1 inch grosgrain ribbon here, 
It's pretty easy. You just fold it in half and sew it over the raw edge. You can also use bias tape, other kinds of ribbon, or anything else like that for this purpose. It doesn't really matter much. There are guides for this kind of thing, but I'm doing it freehand, which is simple enough. You just need it to cover the messy raw edge, and this seam won't really show much in the final finished product, so don't sweat it if it isn't perfect. When this is done, I can turn the bin right side up, and it actually kind of looks like a bin. It just doesn't really have structure yet. So all that remains is to insert the plastic pieces of the campaign sign. The corrugated plastic is about a quarter of an inch thick, give or take, and that does take up some space. So you'll need to cut it undersized by maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch, depending on how stretchy your fabric is, so that you can get them in. Don't worry, that won't actually make your bins end up undersized, because the panels of plastic will sit slightly apart from each other when the whole thing is assembled anyway. This is a minor point, but the corrugation in this kind of plastic provides somewhat more stiffness in one direction than the other. The other sides of the box keep each side flat vertically, so I'm cutting the panels so that the corrugations will run horizontally. This should keep the sides of the bins from bowing out as much when there's bulky stuff in the bin. I'm cutting these with a rotary cutter, but you can also cut this material pretty easily with a utility knife if you have a decent surface to cut onto. Cutting along the edge of a ruler or a straight edge is ideal. Make sure you hold it steady and definitely keep your fingers out of the way. Once the pieces are cut, I snip off the corners to round them over and help slide them into the slots without snagging on the fabric. And by the way, thanks to Kit Collins for her approval to use her sign in this video. With all the pieces cut, it's time to put them in. Depending on your fabric and how you cut the plastic panels, these can be kind of a tight fit. But it is nice if they're snug, because that'll keep the fabric on the outside nice and smooth. One approach is to cut them exactly to your original dimensions, and then cut them down as needed. If your fabric is a bit stretchy, that might even work. But they probably need to be about a quarter of an inch smaller in each direction, since the material is just under a quarter of an inch thick. Start with the bottom panel. With the bin inside out, just slide the bottom panel into place. This one bent a little bit, but it's on the bottom, so it won't show in the end. When you turn it right side out, the bottom panel will stay put because of the other sides of the box. Then slide in the side panels and close the Velcro. You might have to reach in and pull that bound seam allowance out of the way, because sometimes it's bulky enough to keep the panels from sliding in easily. I found that I need to work my way around the circumference once or twice to straighten out the Velcro and keep everything nice and smooth. Since I kept the Velcro shy of the corners, any excess fabric of the flap can just poke into the gap between the Velcro at the corners and everything will come out nice and square. And they're done! If that was useful, go to dillpigglegear.com slash projects for other ideas and project tutorials and uh, show me what you come up with. I'd love to see it. See you later. Thank you.